budget gap of ten and a half billion dollars, and it wasn't easy. But we put our priorities and our budget together, and that's what's not happening here. So two years ago, he said, "Give me another chance. I'm the smartest guy in the world. You need me. You need me because I can handle this budget crisis." Well, here we are, two years later, and we could have gotten this crummy budget from anybody. So. efforts to close engine companies across the city. Two years ago, it was five. Started overnight and they're going to be completely five. One in my district in South Beach. And we said no to them. And we said no and we were able to win because the people came out. Last year was a little bit different. Price was a little bit higher. He wanted to do 20. And we won because Christine Quinn, the leader of the city council, said not on my watch. This year, the price tag is 55 million. And for us to win, I'm telling you, it will be a combination of you all, the public, and the city council. And we need to work together. So seeing all of you, seeing 15,000 people strolling in Manhattan early today, it gives me hope. I just want to say one thing to you. You turn on the television, you turn on the news, you read the newspapers, all you hear is the city's broke. The city's broke. The city has no money. You hear the mayor say... We're getting screwed over by Albany. We're getting screwed over by Washington. But in three weeks, the city council will pass a budget that will approach 70 billion, with a B, like in the lottery commercials. This one, 70 billion dollars. This is not about money, this is about priorities. And if you close one engine company, you have 70 billion dollars worth of misplaced priorities. Stay with us. Hang with us. This is not an easy fight. This is real. This is not make-believe. He's just not putting it out there. He has demonstrated a complete lack of respect for this department. He closed firehouses. He changed the hazmat protocols. He has forgotten the sacrifice made by this department on 9-11 and long before. You're very kind, you're very kind. Jimmy Otto had it right. And it doesn't matter, I say wherever I go, it doesn't matter if you're from Brooklyn, like we all are, you're from Staten Island, you're Democrat, or you're Republican. You're a person, you're a human being, you're a New Yorker, and you deserve to be safe. And you cannot take away firehouses and let people be safe. It doesn't work that way. going to be in danger, your family's going to be in danger, and somehow you're just supposed to grin and bear it. That's unacceptable. That is not doing his job. I have a firehouse a block away from my house in Brooklyn in 220. That firehouse is slated for closure. That firehouse has protected my family for almost 20 Sorry, years. Just... My children are going to be less safe. For anyone who lives in this community, your children are going to be less safe. Are we supposed to take that line down? 
Oh, no, he's going to stay there. The government is here to serve us, not the other way around. The government is supposed to listen to us. When we say something's important, we're supposed to see it in our city budget. So there is nothing more important than protecting the safety of our people. And right here, with 284, you're talking about response time going up almost a full minute. A life can be lost in a full minute. A life can be lost in seconds, but a full minute means the city of New York is turning away from the needs of its people. We won't stand for it. Listen, we have three weeks. We have three weeks to stop this. Everybody in this crowd and everyone you know needs to call 311 and needs to say to the mayor, we won't let this happen. And if we do this, we can stop it. Thank you.